When Thomas Aquinas talks about truth, goodness, and beauty, he talks about these as so-called transcendentals. They're features of reality found in everything. They don't have a limit to where they can be found in the world. Everything that is, insofar as it is, has a certain truthfulness to it, an intelligibility. If it's real, it's somehow intelligible. Or it has a goodness to it. So everything that is, insofar as it is, has some degree of goodness to it. And through its own operations or activities, it could achieve a greater goodness from a good hydrogen atom to a good kangaroo to a good human being. So goodness is said in many ways, and truth is said in many ways. And beauty emerges from within truth and goodness as a kind of expression of the two. Sometimes Aquinas calls beauty the splendor of the truth. It's the allure of the truth, or he calls it the splendor of the form. So beauty emerges when there's a kind of harmony and proportionality among the parts of a thing, say the branches of a tree, the flowers on the branches of the tree, the proportionality and harmony that emerges there creates a kind of splendor, a beauty, a goodness of the form, or a goodness of the truth of the thing. Can we ascribe all this to God? Can we say that God is true, good, and beautiful? Well, no, if we mean by that that he's true, good, and beautiful in the way creatures are. Aquinas expressly says that when it comes to being, unity, truth, goodness, beauty, and these other transcendental notions, they may not be said of God in the same way they're said of creatures, lest we confuse God and his creation. In fact, he says in some sense, mischievously a little bit, God does not exist if we mean by that that he exists in the way creatures exist. It's to get us thinking about the difference of God or the, the transcendence of God, who is not a creature. But if we make the right qualifications, we can say that God is truth itself, the first truth, eternal and sovereign goodness, and is uncreated beauty. To make those kinds of ascriptions, we have to make some qualifications in the way we speak about God. We have to say, for example, that all these things can be ascribed to God insofar as we see these features of created reality, and God is the cause of those creatures, and the cause is always greater than the effect. So if we find in the effect, that's to say in creation, that God causes truth, goodness, and beauty, then they must be found in some higher way in the cause. That's to say God must be truth, goodness, and beauty. At the same time, Aquinas says we have to negate all the limited finite features we find of those things if we were to speak of God. So God is not a finite truth, a finite goodness, or a finite beauty. And so God is, in some sense, incomprehensible, transcendent in his truth, goodness, and beauty. And finally, Aquinas says he must be supremely truthful, good, and beautiful, because he is, without common measure, the cause, the exemplar of all the truth, goodness, and beauty found in the world. He's literally incomprehensible in this respect. We cannot get our minds around, which is what comprehend means, what God is in himself, but we can say whatever God is, he infinitely exceeds the truth, goodness, and beauty of his creatures, which he causes to be.